Well, okay, guys. So uh, we got 20 minutes for, for the presentation. It's, it's really, really little time for, to cover such an uh, interesting subject. And I'm really keen uh, of answering your questions just after my presentation. We'll have like 10 minutes, uh, hopefully, <laughs> for the questions and answers session. My name is Bartosz Dobrowolski, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, an advisor of uh, RICS Poland and also a member of the RICS uh, uh, management board here in Poland. I'm also a founder of PropTech Poland uh, Association and Foundation here. We are connecting the real estate industry with the technology globally. And I would like to tell you today about how um, the co-working trend is uh, impacting the real estate and what exactly should property industry uh, professionals learn from the co-working trend as soon as possible because the changes are going really, really uh, quick. So first of all, we have to think about what um, the co-working thing, the co-working uh, place we think it is because at the very beginning it was kind of you know hacker space it was a, a place uh, that was full of freelancers kind of loved a lot of you know millennials and open space place where you could see a lot of colorful creative people and we we'll still have this image in our heads and whenever we we uh, talk about co-working spaces in the industry talks round tables this is something that most of the people that i talk to have in the mind so they are having the you know, freelancing, creative, open space um, uh, spots around the city. But actually, uh, the co-working space has uh, evolved much in, uh, in, in the last two years. And uh, for example, we were shifted from 8% of corporations to startup ratio to 30%, as far as I know. I mean, this is data from like two, years, two months ago. And uh, well, <laughs> where's co-working that we know here? I mean, look at this space. I mean. This particular space is, is one of co-working spaces that have 90% of private office uh, ratios. And this is, for example, the one that I'm sitting in uh, currently right now. It's Business Link Astoria in Poland, one of the biggest networks in the region. And they have, uh, just like uh, Mindspace, like we were, 90% of private offices ratio to 10% open space and, uh, well, and, uh, and the social space, which means that they they started with open spaces, but now they know that the business lies in the, in the small private uh, offices, service offices. So these are not the same co-working spaces as it was before. So um, let's, uh, sorry, so let's, uh, let's just take a look at how the co-working spaces are now inspiring operators like WeWork. I mean, I will, I will use the WeWork example very often, but it's, it's not uh, because WeWork is the only one at the market, but it's expanding really fast. I, I don't know if you are aware that WeWork uh, has just uh, landed in Warsaw and is uh, preparing five spots in, in, in just one city in Warsaw and probably will even expand to two more, which is quite a lot as for the, the start in the region. So, uh, the whole trend, trend of quick changing environment that uh, does not want to be bound with long-term agreements because this is exactly what co-working spaces is. I mean, the, 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 the global uh, industry of, of financial, of technology changes so quickly that companies do not want to be bound with the long-term agreements. They want to develop quickly, they want to check if the products work, and then they want to either expand or just move from the space, from the office. So for example, WeWork is now building offices. I mean, like for example, this one that you can see on the screen. I mean, this is the office in uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard in New, York's, uh, New York City. Uh, I, I was a part of a deployment at the uh, New Lab co-working space at Brooklyn Navy Yard. And, 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 and the whole Brooklyn Navy Yard, the, the development corporation, they were all talking about the new building that will be uh, built by, by WeWork. So, uh, co-working operators are now looking also for, for different spaces that they could expand and WeWork is a good example here. WeWork is also a good example, again, <laughs> I told you I will talk about WeWork, but WeWork is a good example of several things and several trends on the market. That's why I will use it at the, at the very beginning. Uh, the next one is the building spaces that are, um, that are data driven rather than just uh, business model and uh, gut feeling driven. So more and more spaces invest in uh, sensors and systems that let them analyze the big data collected in the space. As you can see on this particular slide, I don't know how to use my 
my mouse, maybe I can, I, I don't know. Okay, just imagine my finger uh, passing through all these elements. Take a look at these white dots in, on the slide, slide. So you can see that you can, you can place a sensor on particular, on, on, uh, exactly anything, like a bicycle, like a chair, like amenities, whatever they, people use at the workstations, and even on the people, because all of them have their mobile phone with them, which in fact is a set of sensors. Then you can collect the data and analyze how the space is being used. And this is something that now uh, property industry is learning from, uh, from the co-working space, because co-working spaces became labs that um, led operators to analyze how the space is being used, who is talking with whom and where and when exactly, so the space can be easily uh, optimized. And, uh, and if it goes for, uh, again, for, for WeWork example, uh, well, like 300, 350,000 members gives you knowledge of uh, analyzing something uh, that is equivalent of analyzing something like a medium-sized city. So imagine that you have a power to gather insights from, from a medium-sized city, citizens, <coughs> sorry, citizens' uh, habits and the ways that they are using, the path that they are using, uh, the time they go to bed, the time they wake up, where they like to eat, work, and play. And then you can analyze the data, and then you can build better cities. And I think that this exactly is what uh, we were just trying to do, that gathering information from their locations uh, will let them uh, also participate in the urban movement and urban development rather than just offices. That's why they also invest in uh, co-working, not only co-working spaces, but also construction and, uh, and operating offices. And this is also, <coughs> excuse me guys, it's, uh, it's winter here in Poland, it's quite cold. <coughs> And uh, I think I caught something. Anyway, you are safe on the other side of this digital link. So more and more of my um, of my uh, my partners, <coughs> they are starting using sensors in their offices, not only for the research purpose, but also um, for the purpose of optimizing their own spaces and adapting the spaces for the needs of their employees. Because on the other hand. We also have um, professional office operators. Again, like WeWork, uh, for example. I know you will be tired by WeWork, but Power by We is also a good example. <coughs> Please excuse me. It's also a good ex example of how going from uh, an office space and a flexible office space to an office operator is possible when you get the knowledge how the office is being used. So CBRE, JLL, Savills, Colliers and other big global agencies, they are now gathering uh, not only uh, the knowledge about technology, uh, but they also gather people and talents from the market who used to be work, or used to work for um, flexible office operators and they uh, build around them uh, flexible office uh, departments. And I will tell about this uh, a bit longer, a bit later. But we either have or we will have soon uh, at, the, at the meeting here, Adam Lees from JLL Poland, who before used to work uh, at JLL and he was responsible for flexible offices. Kushman and Wakefield in Poland sign up an agreement, a strategic, strategic agreement with uh, a technology platform that lets them create new products with uh, mixed uh, mixed lease, uh, mixed leasing um, uh, agreements. So corporations may um, may not only rent a, 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 an office, uh, the main office, but also a satellite offices uh, distributed across different uh, co-working spaces. I'll also get back to this uh, in uh, in a few minutes. So, so there are also some um, co-working space operators like we were like Mindspace who are now expanding their services to become office operators. Like, for example, uh, in Silicon Valley, um, powered by We, operated by WeWork, uh, created space for 3,000 Facebook employees. So, well, you can imagine that you can just give a space to such an operator and they will, that he, he, will, he will take care of everything, like, you know, feed out, sensors, data analysis, and also community management and management of your staff. 
So it, it's like absolutely a comfortable uh, situation for your HR as well. Uh, that you, you will have your people motivated and your space adapted to their needs. Having such, such a space is also something that lets you, um, lets you attract new talents. And new talents now are looking for spaces in which they feel good, uh, healthy, they feel uh, taken care of. And, uh, and some of the companies on, on the market are, are building the, 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 the workforce from the very beginning. And again, let's take a look at the, um, uh, at the, at the initiative uh, that, that came out from, uh, again, from WeWork. Uh, which is uh, we learn it's a set of schools it's the we store where you can buy uh, digital um, software that you might need for your business uh, you, we've got also we gym it's a set it's a it's a network of um, of um, of fitness clubs where you can uh, where you can uh, uh, work out so well they are trying to uh, to take over all our life, not just the one third that is responsible, uh, that is uh, set in the office space, uh, which is on one hand very interesting, on the one hand, on the other hand, for, for me, it's a bit, well, thrilling, you know, because uh, you send the kids to, uh, to, to we, uh, we Learn School, then uh, you go to work to we work uh, office, then you go to a we Gym to work out, and you buy equipment and whatever you need in the Wii store that has a, a great potential because of the, of the number of, uh, number, of um, number of potential customers. So, uh, to, so, so having such a, such a volume of customers, you can have better prices, which again is a great uh, lesson that by, by building communities, you can have, you can create new uh, revenue streams for your company. And this is also something that happens now in real estate industry. I mean, there's this uh, vintage, let's say, real estate industry. They are also trying to build communities around their offices. So, for example, they are changing the property managers into community managers, or community managers are now supporting property managers. And there are different uh, models of creative business models of uh, spaces that are being built. Like, for example, this one. That's a building that was erected in 2018 in Warsaw, in the very middle uh, of the city. And this is called The Nest. And the whole building is something like a, a club co-working space with a space for kids, for, for, for some events and workshops for kids and parents. Uh, there's a, one or two floors for events only. There's a co-working space. There's a pop-up store. There's a gallery. And everything is a co-working space in which you can work, commun communicate, and network with people that are mostly, I mean, this particular um, example, that are mostly, uh, they, they mostly succeeded in their businesses. They are not looking for a startup office, but they are looking for a second office. So that's, again, a new business model, like creating clubs in which successful people who already have the company, they are looking for a spot that they could network with other successful people in this particular case with people from the uh, adv advertisement, uh, law offices, and uh, high technology uh, industries may find their space network and events. Imagine eight floors of co-working space in the very center, central space of, um, of uh, capital of Poland and dedicated only for second office uh, um, people. But before we continue, we have to understand a few things why this working trend is changing the, re in the, the real estate industry and why people are um, changing the way that the uh, offices are being built, furnished, uh, optimized, and, uh, and why the working trend um, rose on the market at all. So there are two main factors, except for, of course, this uh, factor that like 65% of people uh, in the world are now migrated into cities and this is the first time in the history of the world when when over 60 percent of global citizenship is now located in uh, in uh, in cities not in uh, in villages for example so the first thing is the uh, uh, technology startups uh, phenomenon technology startups are uh, startups that are quite easy to build because uh, by having a concept you can 
start prototyping really easy. You do not have to build any uh, physical uh, objects. You can start with uh, with mockups. You can start with uh, simple MVPs with simple prototypes of the system. With a good idea, you can uh, you can uh, attract investors and uh, quite um, rapidly develop the company and traction on the market. But the whole idea of startups is failing fast. So you can prototype, show some to the customers, and then you can uh, easily um, justify if the, if the startup has its power to develop or not. So, well, startups are the first target of the flexible offices and offices uh, with a short term lease because they do not know how big they will be in like half a year, uh, whether they will uh, grow or they will disappear. They're using new technologies and they expect new technologies in the spaces that they work. Uh, they are agile and they are scalable, so they want to easily scale their offices. And with the standard um, uh, approach, it's not possible. Uh, there's a lot of creative and casual people, so they want to also c communicate to each other and network. And they well, uh, startups are so small that they usually do not have the, the HR uh, departments, and it's quite difficult for for the owners of these tech startups to build. Uh, company culture. So uh, this, the, the co-working space uh, solutions and approach is a holy grail for them because they just put people in the space and someone takes care of their people. So what's happen what happens now in the real estate industry, a lot of uh, real estate industry players are now uh, selling the spaces and offices, not only to office managers, but also to HR people, showing how the amenities in this particular spot uh, will support their uh, company culture. And the second thing is, of course, Generation Z, Generation Z. So uh, I know that you are fed up with uh, millennials and all the, all the stuff uh, connected to millennials. We analyze them uh, back and forth. Uh, but actually, something that we should now uh, put our attention to is Generation Z rather than millennials. Millennials are already on the market. We um, validated the, all the uh, hypotheses that we put on, uh, on this generation. But now we are having a, a new wave of, uh, of workforce, for workforce on, the, on the market. And these are people that were born, well, depending on the market and depending on the, on the report, uh, they were born between 1995 and 2005. They are called digital natives because these are people, the first generation that was born with a mobile phone. They, 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 they didn't learn, they didn't have to study how to use digital gadgets. They just learned, they, they, just, uh, they just were born with it. And they, um, well, they, uh, that was their first toy. So, um, so uh, this is what they expect to have everywhere. And this is what they expect to have control with, with all the surrounding uh, environment. So Generation Z, wants to order food with mobile phone, they want to order taxi, they want to make friends, they want to control their financial uh, and the situation and their account banks and everything. They just do not imagine having a space where they have to look for help because normally they just click a button and, and they have instant re uh, response. So uh, what's more interesting with Generation Z is that they are really, mm, um, afraid of, 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 of taking the, any kind of risk. I mean, this comes from the, um, the, the global crisis in 2008. Uh, when they were little kids, they observed their parents losing jobs, losing houses, losing everything. And they learned them, uh, from them that it's not worth to have a lot, that it's better to keep low profile and just, for example, use sharing economy and use rather than just uh, um, then buy and then potentially lose some, uh, some goods. That's why they are so keen on sharing economy. And what's, what's the most important thing is that they have great need for belonging. Um, our parents, they have um, some associations, you know, like scouts, like uh, political parties and stuff that they uh, participated in. They met together, they, they interacted, they, they had meetings and in events and, 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 and mutual, uh, mutual uh, activities. But the Generation Z is only left 
with Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and other social media. But actually, they are looking for other people, and they do not find other people in the uh, digital, um, digital layer. So they are quite disappointed with it, and they just need, because we're human, we're animals, and we want to have other people around us. They are looking for communities, and that's why uh, the shared offices uh, provide them the, well, the feeling of being important and needed. And that's how the, the WeWork, Mindspace, Business League, and other, um, other co-working spaces and shared offices build their power because they gave community. And it's not just because of the free beer and happy hours. It's to feel, fulfill the need of belonging. So knowing, knowing all this, we can think about uh, how the magic, what's the magic be behind the co-working spaces. I was, of course, giving you some advice uh, during the, this speech. But just take a brief look at the, we will wrap it up now, and uh, what can we learn more from co-working spaces. First of all, uh, how to build and manage relationship with our tenants and customers. There's no longer space for sell and forget. We have to build long-term relationships because uh, our tenants, our customers, will expect uh, an, exceptional, uh, an exceptional service from us. Uh, this beautiful lady uh, at the, uh, on the screen is Christina Yanda. She's a community manager at the Imo Finance buildings here in Poland. And she manages a community of 10,000 members, 10,000 tenants and their employees in five or six buildings here in Warsaw. Uh, she's, uh, well, kind of replaced uh, a property manager in this, uh, in these locations. She meets the people, she meets HR and office managers. She calls them and says, hi, may I drop by for a coffee? And they all welcome her because she listens to them. And then she creates a tailored events for the people. And I, uh, and I talk about some parties and fun and also some uh, soul and body events like you know, yoga, training, jogging, volleyball and stuff like that. And, uh, and this is more effective because it builds relation. And uh, you have to build relation because other one, other your competition will build the building just next to your and it will, be, um, it will be newer, it will be fancier, and people will go there unless they feel good in this particular location. Of course, the money is also a great factor, but if you justify money and how the, your talent, talents are happy with the building that they are located, it always makes a difference. Then learn to utilize new technology. More and more uh, players in the real estate industry, they learn how to really, really benefit from new technology. And I'm not only talking about um, conference room booking stuff, but I'm talking about optimization, uh, space optimization, marketplaces, asset, sorry again, asset uh, management, and, uh, and also things that come to the bare bones of the real estate industry like um, construction and logistics of the of the space you have to be ready to offer your products in a flexible way like for example mixed lease that I mentioned before so to so just talk to your to your customers and ask them if they uh, if they are interested because they might be and not and not know yet might be interested in mixed leasing just like Pushman Wakefield and JLL for example is doing now that they offer some space that is fixed in a building and that's a headquarter and maybe one or two satellites that could be easily scaled for some uh, project uh, teams. Then learn to provide your uh, tenants and their employees with additional services and amenities because this is something that their employees are now expecting. They are expecting it because they expect something more than just a desk and the uh, workplace. Also, think about new business lines. I already mentioned about Kushman Wakefield and the ShareSpace uh, marketplace platform. They signed an agreement one year ago, a strategic agreement, and they are now offering uh, adaptive workspace, I mean the flexible workspaces, uh, not, only, not only classic offices uh, as one of the products. And uh, well, uh, I think the, the main lesson is to transform digitally. And it, not, it doesn't mean to install, um, install a new application and just invest in some uh, uh, new CRM or, uh, I don't know, BIM platform, whatever. It's just a matter of your mindset, mindset of you and your uh, management, because you have to change your structure. You have to change the way your company operates. 
You have to invest in new talents. You have to attract people who knows how to transform digitally uh, your operations and will tell you how to change your company culture because company culture is all process is all are all processes around the, your operations about your customers operations about your customers care uh, selling products and services and you have to change your uh, corporation uh, culture you have to change your structure you have to attract new talents and you have to think about how the technology will bring you benefits on the market and i think that's uh, that's all because we are just running uh, running out of time. Just wanted to uh, thank you very much. And uh, should you have any questions now, we have some some time for it. Just uh, take a look at the little. I don't know if you will see this little uh, clip that I found some time ago on the internet, and it uh, made me think that it's a good metaphor on uh, what happens if you stay as you are and you will meet your competition that is a few steps uh, in front of you and invested in technology and knows how to use digital transformation just take a look at it that's all and that's new that's old and that's new looks almost the same but the result is different the person on the left leave the person on the right unfortunately not even though this beautiful chevrolet bel air 1959 looks like a tank just like a lot of property industry players think that they are on the market because well they are just building stuff thank you very much So, well, I don't know, guys, if you can still uh, hear me. Um, if you, should you have any questions, then, then please just drop them in the Q&A session here, section here at the bottom of the screen. You, you, you probably somewhere here will, will see this Q&A um, a, a box, and you can drop a question there, and I, I believe I will see it here. And, uh, well, we also have a chat so I don't know if you can see that no. okay okay no that doesn't work Okay, guys, so well, thank you very much. Should you uh, need anything from me and uh, have any questions? Oh, there's a lot of discussion about whether WeWork's business model will be sustainable in the downturn. Any views? Okay, Ross, thank you for the question. I mean, first of, first of all, uh, I, I meet this question very often because, so, well, people are really surprised that a company that has valuation of 30 something million billion I mean, billion uh, dollars still does not bring any profits but well uh, when we when we look at we were not as uh, as a co-working space operator but but as a, a potential office operator a construction company a property management company a facility management company when then it gives a totally different uh, totally different uh, uh, point of view and uh, and as I mentioned during the, the presentation when you when you when you realize the scale of the data that they are collecting right now and the insights that they might have so this is the first time in the building industry history in the real the real estate history when we have such a huge number of people that are being tracked and analyzed in their workspace but because we were also have the co-living structures that where people live, a place where they have the workout um, uh, place, I mean this we gym, um, we gym uh, network, and the schools, then imagine analyzing all these aspects of human lives, work, life, work, uh, workout and fitness, and school. And you can analyze how people interact, how they use the space, and based on that, you can then decide how to make more efficient spaces 
if it goes both for uh, energy and also for the uh, stream, streamline of, of operations, how to make the spaces support, really supporting their uh, occupiers. So I think that there's, uh, there's a great potential in this model. And I'm a bit of afraid of, 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 of what may happen because, <laughs> because actually, I mean, if it will work, then we will have another Google or Facebook, but in the physical world. Uh, I mean, which you know what it means. I mean, Google has the, the ultimate power. It goes for advertisement, for uh, whatever information comes through the internet. It's, it's, it's owned by Google somehow. I mean, internet is Google right now. I mean, I mean okay, I'm exaggerating, but anyway, it's incredible how powerful they are. So if it will work, then we get another player on the market like that, that will control our life, that will track our life and will build something and earn money on, how, on the information we share with them, consciously or not consciously. But if it will not work, then the whole bubble that, in fact, is filled with, uh, we were mostly, will blow in our face. And the whole idea of, uh, of co-working spaces, co-living, sharing economy in the, in the smart cities and stuff like that will be in danger then because of the uh, amount of money that was pumped in the whole idea. So both ways are a bit scary, <laughs> but uh, if you ask if, if, if the, the business model uh, has a potential to be successful, then I think yes. Are there any more questions from you guys? I don't know. Can can you see my um, can you see the um, the chat here? I will type my I will type my uh, email address, and you can drop me a line. Um, oh yeah, I, I can see your answer, Ross. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you share my thoughts. Um, so that's my uh, that's my email address, guys. So should you have any other questions, just please drop me a line, and I will be more than happy to share some some uh, insights with you. Uh, you can also find me uh, on LinkedIn, and we can connect. And, uh, and I hope that we can we can do something together. Uh, by the way, next year we plan to uh, we plan to launch a, a big regional conference in Poland. Uh, in the in the third or fourth quarter, and a small one in the second quarter. So, should you like, for example, to become a keynote speaker or a speaker, then you are more than welcome to to contact me on that. I think we're running out of time now because it's uh, three forty, and we were supposed to um, to end uh, at three thirty. So, as long as you don't have any more questions, then uh, I say thank you very much for spending this half an hour with me and I hope you liked it and I hope it was valuable for you. Thank you very much.